Ah uh, yeah, today we're learning English with Leonardo DiCaprio's iconic movie, The Wolf of Wall Street. So in this lesson, you will learn with interviews with Leo about The Wolf of Wall Street, as well as scenes from the movies. And did you actually know that this movie is based on the life of a real person, Jordan Beltfoot? He actually went to prison for his wrongdoings, but nowadays he's a popular motivational speaker, which I think makes him a very fascinating person for you to learn English with. So if you're new here, every single week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Jawad, who says that he thinks our lessons are the best investment of his time for learning English. So don't waste any more time. Join us by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. And I'd like to say hello to Leonardo DiCaprio, hello, hello. Marty Scorsese, Jonah Hill, and Terry Winter, who wrote the script. Let's go to the subject and how this began. What what drew you all to this this story? What was so fascinating after reading the book was this time period in Wall Street, but how candid and honest Jordan Belfort was about his undertakings during that time period. I mean, I've never read uh, an account of anything more embarrassing in my life. <laughs> and so we uh, we optioned the book. Terry immediately wrote an unbelievable screenplay. And I think the road to getting it made was, you know, six or seven years wow. long. Uh, we yeah. tried to make it initially at some, at, right after Shutter Island. No, before. Before Shutter Island. We did Shutter right. instead. Remember, right after That's the right. That, That's right. Uh, that uh, Irish uh, gangster thing. That's right. <laughs> Let's go to the subject and how this began. What what drew you all to this this story? Drew is the past tense of draw. We say that something draws you to something when it attracts your attention or makes you want to do something. Example: What drew me to teaching English is the fact that it helps people connect to the entire world. As you'll see in this clip from the movie, a common collocation is to draw someone's attention. By the way, if you've seen this movie, you know that it is not family friendly. So beware of the F word and other profane language and situations. Wait, fucking you know driving what? you like I'm a fucking maniac. You know the attention that that fucking draws. You know what? I'm not stupid. I'm smart. smart. I make million dollar okay, deals. Right. What was so fascinating after reading the book was this time period in Wall Street, but how candid and honest Jordan Belfort was about his undertakings during that time period. Fascinating means extremely interesting. What do you read? It's a biography on Walt Disney. It's fascinating. He's a genius, you know. I mean, a once in every 50 or 100 years kind of genius. What, what are you, 12? Which of these are other ways to say fascinating? Then, if someone is candid about something, they tell the truth, even when it may be unpleasant or embarrassing. By the way, which of these do you think is the noun version of candid? Leo is talking about Jordan Belfort's candor because he's extremely honest and sincere in his book. Jordan Belfort was sentenced to 22 months in prison for his wrongdoings as a stockbroker. Nowadays, he is a famous inspirational speaker. By the way, to continue with this lesson, it's important you know what Wall Street is. Wall Street is a street in New York that has many buildings where stocks are bought and sold. A stock is a share in a company. That's one of the parts in which the ownership of a company is divided into. Finally, Jordan Belfort was a stockbroker, meaning someone who sells stocks. Ah, this place is. What does that Stockbrokers. <laughs> Long Island stockbrokers yeah. in Long Island. How candid and honest Jordan Belfort was about his undertakings during that time period. An undertaking is an important job, piece of work, or activity you are responsible for. Leo saying this with a bit of sarcasm, as Jordan's undertakings were robbing people of their money. Now, needless to say, the Hercules was a monumental undertaking. It is the largest plane ever built. It is over five stories tall, with a wingspan longer than a football field. That's more than a city block. Hey, do you want to master American pronunciation so that you can understand natives even when we speak really fast? 
then I highly recommend you give our Fluent with Friends course a try. In this fun 48 week course, every week you get a lesson that accompanies the first two seasons of the TV series Friends. And you get 20 plus page PDF power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, access to our Fluency Circle global community, and so much more. And the best part is you can try it for free with our three part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below and you can learn more about that and sign up. And we look forward to meeting you inside. I mean, I've never read uh, an account of anything more embarrassing in my life. <laughs> An account is a written or spoken description that says what happens in an event or process. In this book then, as we've said, Jordan gives a candid and detailed account of his tenure, that is, a period of time when someone has an important job, as a corrupt stockbroker. Hey John, thank you for your vote of confidence, and welcome to the Investor Center. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. He thanked his victim for his vote of confidence. This is something we say when you do or say something that shows you support someone and approve of their actions. Bye bye. How'd you fucking do that? <laughs> just like that, I made two grand. The other guys looked at me like I just discovered fire. Great, even better. I was selling garbage to garbage men and making cash hand over fist. The only problem you're gonna have is that you didn't buy more. Boom, shock. So I was selling them shit. Where you go? The way I looked at it, their money was better off in my pocket. I knew how to spend it better. As you can see, Jordan was what we call a con artist, someone who tricks or deceives people in order to get money from them. And so we, uh, we optioned the book. Terry immediately wrote an unbelievable screenplay and... As a verb, to option something means to buy or sell the right to own or use something. The movie production had to option Jordan's book in order to be allowed to make a movie about it. The screenplay is the words that are written down for actors to say in a film, and the instructions that tell them what they should do. He describes the screenplay as unbelievable. If you want to say that something is extremely good, unbelievable is a good adjective to use. You're saying that you can't believe how good something is. However, most of the times if you say to someone, you're unbelievable, you're emphasizing a negative aspect about how they are. Example, how can you be so lazy? You're unbelievable. Or you're so lazy, it's unbelievable. But it all depends on the tone of how you say it. In this clip from Friends, we can see Brad Pitt uses unbelievable negatively towards Rachel, but she interprets it as too good to believe. Oh, oh, hang on. I think I remember you. Did we, um, did we fool around at Lance Davis's graduation party? You were unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> I think the road to getting it made was, you know, six or seven years wow. long. Uh, we tried to make it initially at some, at, right after Shutter Island. By road, Leo is referring to the process that involved making the movie. This probably included optioning the book, writing the script, auditioning the actors, etc. Example, the road to English fluency can be a long one, but don't give up. Shutter Island is another famous Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese movie. That's how it started. As you've got to know each other, what surprised you about each other? Well, I had always had, um, you know, we have this image of Martin Scorsese, I think, <laughs> from the films that he's done. <laughs> I, I mean, look, I, I, I didn't quite understand what a professor of film he is, how he could challenge anyone in the world as far as his <laughs> knowledge of film is concerned, his passion for film and its preservation and how the man lives and breathes cinema every single day of his life. But beyond that, what an incredible collaborator he is with other actors and how much he respects the actor's process. I mean, you know that from seeing the movies that he does, but there really is nobody better. Your, your performance is paramount to him, and, and the film, I think, is structured ultimately around what you do as an actor and what he brings out. And, he keeps talking about plot being insignificant to him when he does a movie. It's, it's about the characters, it's about the people. And that's, that's a process that needs to be nurtured and that's something that is, uh, is a talent in, unto itself because it's difficult to get us as performers to feel comfortable on set and, and be our best. That's how it started. As you've got to know each other, what surprised you about each other? If you get to know a person, you become familiar with someone. 
And I'm sure they'll like you, too, once they get to know you. When I'm away. A common mistake learners make is confusing meet, know, and get to know. Which of these is incorrect? When we refer to the first time you see and talk to someone, we say meet. When you meet someone, if you like them, maybe you start to talk to them, and by doing so, you get to know them. If you know a person, you simply know who that person is because you recognize his face or name. But knowing someone could also mean that you're familiar with them. You know about his life because you had the chance to get to know them. All of you know Kimmy Belzer, right? Yes, we do. Now, most of you met Kimmy, the beautiful, sophisticated woman that she is today. That's not the Kimmy that I met. The Kimmy that I met didn't have two nickels to rub together. Okay, she was three months behind on her rent. And when she came to me and asked me for a job, she asked for a $5,000 advance just, just so she could pay his son's tuition. What'd I do, Kimmy? Go on, tell him. You wrote me a check for $25,000. In the movie, this is the scene where Jordan meets Donnie, Jonah Hill's character who would become Jordan's most important partner. Donnie Azor. Hey, Jordan Belfort, nice to meet you. Hey, what do you do, bro? What do you mean, what do I do? For work, what do you do? I'm a stockbroker. Stockbroker? Yeah. Children's furniture. Oh, good for you. It's all right. You make a lot of money? Yeah, I do all right for myself. I mean, look, I, I, I didn't quite understand what a professor of film he is. Here, the verb quite is used to mean completely, as in the clip from The Great Gatsby. I don't quite know where to start. You see, I didn't realize until the other night that I'd met Gatsby five years ago. Quite is used in many ways, but most commonly, it's a synonym of very. Let's see it in use in these other two DiCaprio movies. Jimmy had a rough month. Uh, Jimmy had a heart attack in jail, and uh, then he got himself knifed at uh, Boston City Hospital. You seem quite happy with that result. Hey, do you love Leo? Well, then you might want to check out this playlist featuring the Oscar-winning actor after you finish this lesson. How he could challenge anyone in the world as far as his <laughs> knowledge of film is concerned. His as a verb, to challenge means to test someone's skills and abilities. I recently challenged him to a debate on this program and he declined. Then he uses an expression, as far as something is concerned. We say this to show which subject or thing you are talking about. Example, as far as traffic is concerned, there are no delays at the moment. Also, we often say, as far as I'm concerned, when we give an opinion about something, especially when it might be different from other people's opinions. The guy's history, as far as I'm concerned. History. But you can't just fire him. Webb's his brother-in-law, his county commissioner. Passion for film and its preservation and how the man lives and breathes cinema every single day of his life. When a person lives and breathes something, it is extremely important to them. Example, he lives and breathes music. But beyond that, what an incredible collaborator he is with other actors. He uses the word beyond here to add another comment. For example, he's a great professional, but beyond that, he's a great person. This word is used in many different ways. This, this ability, this, this gift that Steve has, it goes beyond just spotting the hottest shoe trends. Steve's power is that he creates trends. You understand? Your, your performance is paramount to him, and, and the film, I think, is structured ultimately around what you do as an actor. And what paramount means more important than anything else. Example, for that candidate, the needs of the people are paramount. Steve Jobs considered the design of his products to be paramount. He then says that the film is ultimately based on the actor's performances, more than on the script itself. By using the word ultimately, he's emphasizing that about the film. Example, it was a long but ultimately entertaining play. Ultimately, you'll have to decide for yourself what you do as an actor and what he brings out and if you bring out something from someone you make that person behave in a certain way here leo is saying that scorsese brings out certain qualities from the actors 
In the following mini scene, Mark, the character played by Matthew McConaughey, is talking to Jordan as he was just getting started as a stockbroker. At this point, Jordan was a straight up person, but after this conversation with Mark, he becomes a shady salesman. You could say that Mark brought out the con artist in Jordan. I'm, I'm good with water for now though, thank you. It's his first day on Wall Street, give him time. Name of the game, move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. Right, but if you can make a client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? <laughs> no. Mark says the name of the game is basically swindling your clients. The name of the game is the activity that you must do if you want to be successful at a particular activity or business. Swindle is the action that a con artist does to make his money, to cheat someone in order to get their money. And that's, that's a process that needs to be nurtured and that's something that... Literally, you nurture a child by feeding and taking care of them while they are growing. However, more commonly, we use this word meaning to help a plan, idea, feeling, etc. to develop. Example, reading aloud nurtures the love of books in children. It is important to nurture potential in your employees. And I'd like to say hello to Leonardo DiCaprio, hello, hello. Marty Scorsese, Jonah Hill, and Terry Winter who wrote the script. Let's go to the subject and how this began. What, what drew you all to this, this story? What was so fascinating after reading the book was this time period in Wall Street, but how candid and honest Jordan Belfort was about his undertakings during that time period. I'm I mean, I've never read uh, an account of anything more embarrassing in my life. <laughs> And so we, uh, we optioned the book. Terry immediately wrote an unbelievable screenplay and... I think the road to getting it made was, you know, six or seven years wow. long. Uh, we yeah. tried to make it initially at some, at, right after Shutter Island. No, before. Before Shutter Island. We did Shutter yeah. instead. Remember, right That's the right. That, That's right. Uh, that uh, Irish uh, gangster thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's how it started. As you've got to know each other, what surprised you about each other? Well, I had always had, um, you know, we have this image of Martin Scorsese, I think, <laughs> from the films that he's done. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I didn't quite understand what a professor of film he is, how he could challenge anyone in the world as far as his <laughs> knowledge of film is concerned, his passion for film and its preservation and how the man lives and breathes cinema every single day of his life. But beyond that, what an incredible collaborator he is with other actors and how much he respects the actor's process. I mean, you know that from seeing the movies that he does, but there really is nobody better. Your, your performance is paramount to him, and, and the film, I think, is structured ultimately around what you do as an actor and what he brings out. And he keeps talking about plot being insignificant to him when he does a movie. It's, it's about the characters, it's about the people. And that's, that's a process that needs to be nurtured, and that's something that is uh, as a talent in unto itself because it's difficult to get us as performers to feel comfortable on set and, and be our best. All right, I hope you had a lot of fun learning with The Wolf of Wall Street and Leonardo DiCaprio, and you might want to go and check out that movie this week or weekend. And if you want to continue your learning, then I highly recommend you check out this playlist with all of our lessons featuring different movies. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah!